Welcome to Radio Primavera Sound, and we are lucky enough to have us here, uh, to have here with us at the weekend of Maria Arnal and Marcel Bages, uh, Hi. Hi. Catalan duo who have made one of the albums of the year with Clamor, their second full album. Yes. Um, I know you, you've, you've spoken to us at Radio Primavera Sound before, but I'm, uh, I look at things with a very international angle. Um, and... This album has started to get international attention for you. For people who don't understand maybe the history of where you come from and the history you draw on with your music, is there a way you could describe what you do? <laughs> uh, I don't know, but maybe we, we, we can, but I think it's not like our job <laughs> to describe <laughs> what we do. Because when, when you are inside, it's difficult because you hear a lot of the music and the references and the influences that you have, but maybe other people don't get it and have their own conclusion. So I don't know. <laughs> At the same time, it's so fun to also try to make up uh, ideas and narratives and also some of them might resonate better internationally than locally, you know? Um, so, for example, for people that get to know better the, the, the um, history of, uh, of Kronos Quartet or Holy Herdon, um, it might be very interesting, the approach of this album. And but maybe these are references that for some of our public are a bit uh, like um, uh, unknown. I mean, I would say coming from a position of ignorance, maybe that the music you make does draw a lot on Catalan and Spanish musical tradition. Yeah. Um, what appeals to you in that tradition? Well, for me, um, it's the, the beginning of um, a way of understanding myself as a, as a singer and as a musician since I have been singing since I was really like very, very young, even before uh, than speaking. You know, my mother always tell me that I used to sing before um, knowing how to pronounce anything else than mom and dad. So it's really something that has to do with me interchanging with life and reality. Uh, then when I fell in love with these archives and this traditional uh, music, I just wanted like to create out of it and to imitate and learn and learn about these voices that were so based, uh, the relationship with singing was so daily, based in their daily life. So songs that these people would sing while they were working, while they were cooking, eating, celebrating, but also uh, like... Um, so, um, sharing um, mourning, you know. So uh, it just I felt so that it, this resonated with me so so much, and this is why I started collecting all these songs. And then because I love writing also and storytelling, I just started changing lyrics and then making up new lyrics out of it, but singing them with some of the sounds and melismatic like uh, ornaments that I would learn from specific songs. And I just fell in love with it, you know? It, it was never like something planned. And then when I met Marcel, he was as curious as, as me. He had his own like uh, like curiosity, you mm -hmm. know? Maybe not 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 as uh, focused on, on voices, no? Mm -hmm. And... And so, you know, I think it's like that. Some people, when they get into a popular musical tradition, well, preceding pop music, a musical tradition, they do everything they can to recreate it. They don't like to, to change anything. Obviously, particularly with the new album, you've changed a lot of things. Were you ever worried? Did you ever think, like, we shouldn't change this, we should you know, keep in the tradition? Or do you see traditions as things to be built upon? In the root of the, of the um, word, there are two meanings. The idea of uh, 
how betraying, so traicionar, tradición, traición, tradire. Uh, so it's, there is always this tension that tradition is not really, or there is a way of understanding tradition as keeping, you know, like uh, fish in the can, you know. <laughs> fish in the or, can? I mean, like conserva, conserva. Ah, right, right, right. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like, How, uh, like uh, a tin of sardines pickles. or something. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so there is this way, which I, it's great also because there's so much passion on, in there, you know. But also there is these other people that would give life to this material by creating out of it and creating new material out of it. I would say that for us, it was so naturally to start from a point that it was somehow very attached to that. But then it was also so natural to get into a great, into another place, which was much more original, but would, ne would uh, betray by, by giving life, you know? And it was a surprise for us with our first album to see that we could do songs, that we could really like make up songs. And so the second album had to go into this door of creating out of our passion, you know, for music and, and voices. And, and this is what we did. But then we didn't want all the album to be only original songs. And this is why we add also uh, Candela Sevilla, which is the song that uh, was uh, produced with uh, Holly Herdon. And so we had somehow this be, uh, like maximum uh, betrayal <laughs> with her and her uh, um, uh, super cute spawn uh, AI um, uh, singing uh, with me in the song. I think maximum betrayal should be the new slogan. That's yeah, a good one. <laughs> T-shirts with... Uh, I, as, a, as, a, as a way of being very loyal, you know? Yeah. This is the tension there. I wanted to ask about the Holly Herndon um, song because I think I understand what Spawn is. I mean, it's an AI that that she's fed, she feeds voices into. Yeah. Um, so how does it actually work when you when you work with it? Do you just sing a lot and it comes back with something that's like you, or? Um, well, she's really like doing an amazing research along with Matt Dryhurst, Dryhurst and um, it's great. We were in Sonar also working together this last Sonar and it was amazing. They are really doing like breaking the, the landscape and it's going to be so evident in, in some years. It is already, but when it, when it, when this research is going to get into the mainstream, you know, it's going to be so mind blowing. So basically what she was, uh, she was like doing a research with Spawn, but then also with the, with the idea of changing the timber, okay, uh, like transferring the timber into an instrument. So taking my voice uh, and um, transforming it into a flute, into an organ, into a pipe of an organ, and also into a, like a violin. And it worked and it was so interesting how my ornaments and my melismatic um, approach to the song, which was something that we decided to add also because it's not really like that, the traditional one. It's so much more like uh, basic. And, and this, these voices would really be like, were uh, very interesting uh, applied to this way of, of singing. Then we also add uh, like goat voices because we went to the countryside to to play with them, and it was really like the whole song is a, like a, a whole story, which is very fun. So your voice as a flute. Yes, and mm. you can you can listen to it in the second verse when it starts para. There is like a second voice that sounds like a flute, and then again in some other parts of the of the song. Because the idea of the song was to make it polyphonic. And then this polyphonic should not only be human, and then it would be like AI voice and animal voice, insects, there, then there would be all the, um, uh, like the space for the fiction also, you know, like um, mm, we were in a forest and we were recording also the winds and the, <laughs> and the trees and, and um, the, um, the stream of a river, you know? So yeah, this is why you have this somehow like evolving like landscape that is all the time 
giving you information, you know, as if you were in the middle of a mountain and you could hear every every voice of every single uh, like sensitive uh, being. Obviously, AI can be used in lots of different ways with music. And one way to use it is that you can actually make full songs with it. How do you feel about that? About people, like, there have been people making AI Nirvana songs, AI Beatles songs. That's obviously a step further from, from what you did. But how do you feel about AI in, in that way? Amazed. It's great. It's, it's another way to create sounds and another way to explain yourself and you know, going <coughs> to other well, ways of expression. No? So it's amazing. Yeah. How would you feel if somebody, possibly Holly, put loads of your songs into an AI and it spat out um, a new song by you? Well, new song. Mm -hmm. Good? Bad? Yes, weird? Let's, indifferent? Let's do it now, you know? <laughs> I think that the idea of the AI and it is still something very like confusing, um, but we constantly live with AI, like Spotify works with AI, you know, it's so daily for us. Uh, so, but AI uh, like applied to art and specifically to music and, and sound and production, it's just like uh, something that is really like ex exploding and, and it's so interesting to be also part of it in a, in a way and to see also how imagination can, you know, really like, how, how can we imagine differently with the impact of these new technologies? But at the same time, it's so easy to see how we continuously fear and imagine the same limitations that maybe, you know, a person would have in the industrialization with a machine, you know, that would t uh, take out uh, their work, you know, like I was speaking with my mother saying like totally like uh, blown uh, by the, the resident we, we did with Holly. And I would say like, you know, when I take the, fo the, the microphone and I sing, and they can listen Holly's voice, you know, in, in real time, like it's mind blowing. And then she was like, oh, but she's going, this is, this technology is going to steal your work. And it was <laughs> like, wow, this is like a, like, you know, a thing that could be said like some centuries ago with the same, you know. So it's also very interesting how technologies are, are not sometimes, you know, not seen as only like tools, you know, of course, they come with uses, they come with fears, with stigmas, you know. But with AI, we have the opportunity really like to, and specifically when it's uh, uh, like related to art and to, to really like um, imagine differently. So the idea of apocalypse and rebirth hangs over clamor. Yes. Which kind of seems really appropriate for, for now, for, for COVID and post-COVID times. How are you feeling now? More apocalyptic or more reborn? Totally reborn. Marcel? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know the answer. <laughs> it depends on the day, I think. <laughs> hey, come on, you are here every, uh, among palm trees, you know, in this amazing Alicante um, area. <laughs> It's more reborning, no? Yeah. Energy? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Let's, go, let's go for reborn, I think. So uh, the new album, we sort of touched on it before. You brought a lot of electronic effects um, into your work. Was that something you had always wanted to do from the start? Um, I would say, like, um, we have never been so strategic, you know? Hmm. We have always been rather in, uh, intuitive. And when we started, you know, we were also... Um, um, like very focused on our own instruments to then maybe evolve more as, uh, you know, curious musicians, you know. So f at the same time that uh, Marcel was like going like so passionately into into um, drums and beats, you know, I would be like totally obsessed with it all at the same time, you know. So what it's clear, I mean, but... I understand the question because sometimes when before like 
in this five, ten minutes before we just go into the stage, you know, and we are so nervous like that and all dress up and blah, blah, blah. And I also, I always think like, wow, you know, I would love like to show this moment to the Maria that has just like started playing with Marcel <laughs> and like she's going to freak out or she's going to cry of joy, you know, whatever, but she's, she's never imagining herself in this way, you know? And this is what makes me so happy, you know? Like, um, so I would say that also our imagination has evolved so much, you know? And when we started by, but anyway, we, we had some, some like, uh, music that we love, that we keep loving now, and that was much more a reference in Clamor than, for example, in 45 Cerebros, you know, which was more finally part of this research of relating with this traditional music, you know, in a format that was totally traditional, with the guitar and the voice, you know, that then we would expand with uh, effects and, like, um, and, um, and uh, like, um, yeah, and a uh, lot of uh, concept. And was there any kickback at all from any of your audience? Did you have people who were like, no, we don't like this uh, electronic stuff? Or were people uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> but also so many more that loved it this way, you know? I think our first album was a very, like, loved album for so many. And this one is also, you know, for, <laughs> for, for some yeah. other, which is great. But for me, the, the big idea is to say that don't put me or us, you know, in this box where you know what you're going to find, you know, because finally the artists that we love, you know, are the ones that all the time are really like putting themselves into this reborning energy, you know? So they are dying and, re and, and rebirthing in this, in, in every album. And then, so, you know, it's so much fun when you don't know and the, the next album is going to be also a surprise. And, and I think that the, it makes like, I, I, I am not saying that we are uh, special, no? but but uh, we are. We, we, well, yeah, <laughs> <You too. laughs> everybody is you know, <laughs> Every. in his own way. But uh, maybe the, um, that we never did this before. So um, we we put the into electronics and voice voice processing, and because we never did it, it sounds different than maybe people that is uh, 20 years doing it. It's not better and worse, but I think that there's a like a, it's fresh for that. No, I, my point of comparison, um, which I don't know if you like, is Björk, yeah, because of she. We love it. I good. don't know who, who, who. Björk. Björk. The Icelandic singer was once in the Sugar Cubes. <laughs> of course I, he knows. Of course he knows. Okay. <laughs> I was we, obsessed we with her. Bjork, you know, I, I am, but I was very obsessed during the album, like very. <laughs> we love Björk, obviously. There is a song in the album, now it's a, it's a game for you, which has the chords of Venus as a boy. Yeah, three or exactly. four. Don't tell, don't tell oh. him. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll come back song? to you. Now, I, I know explaining lyrics is an awful thing. Mm -hmm. Well, most people don't like to do it. Yeah. But I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to ask, I'm afraid, okay. because... Um, I think your lyrics, are, I really enjoy them. And they're really, I think they explore some unusual things. And they also leave me at a level where I sort of understand them, but not quite. Okay. I think. Fiera de mi. Yes. Is that, is that about some kind of animalistic urge? Or? Yes. I think it's a, like, um, so, clamor, all clamor is about, like, fictional voices. Okay? So it's about... Inhabiting, inhabiting is a word. Inhabiting, yeah. inhabiting other voices, you know. So it's Oklamor is an album that conceptually, uh, like, is set in a fictional uh, reality. You know, it's like an, in a dreamy world. This is something very different from the energy, for example, of Cuarenta Cinco Cerebros in Corazón, which was, was more, much more earthly. You know, but Clamor is so. It's about the imagination. It's about putting yourself into another body, into another body that doesn't have to be human, you know, even, you know. And every voice, every, every song in Clamor is a voice, is like a polyphonic voice that is all the time mutating. This is why we almost never have like a main voice. We always have like a voice that is somehow hacked or tensioned by 
plenty of other voices. Then we have all these soundscapes, all this, you know, as if every sound in the album was was uh, specifically a, a voice. So all these voices make out the clamor, you know? And um, the lyrics have to be, or had to be somehow like these subjects that were, you know, inviting you to inhabit them, you know? So I wanted really this album to be emotionally very uh, variated so that you had like songs that were speaking about vulnerability and mutation from a more like nostalgic or uncomfortable feeling than others that would be even joyful, you know, to play being others, to play being others like very differently others. And this is the, or even sensually, you know, and this is the, the game that I was proposing with this song, with the lyric, which had to do with how we take care with, but also with a big question that is like, why? Uh, like being born human should be better than, for example, being born, uh, I don't know, bird, you know? And this sets some like super big discussions that could be very intellectual and, and I'm not that interested in that, you know? <coughs> because this is an album, it's not like a, a pop album, <laughs> but not a, like a thesis. But this was the idea, you know? Like, because finally, like, um, as you said, you know, the, the concepts that are in, in, in Clamor are this idea of reborning and, and the apocalyptic landscape. But um, we, we, do, we, we are do living like a, an apocalyptic era, which has to do with destroying some of the mind uh, ideas that are not anymore sustainable or useful for our lives. And this big idea, like the apocalyptic idea of nowadays, is the idea that there is not only one world and this world is, is human. You know, there is not only the human world. There are so many million worlds in the same earth, you know, being lived by some other, you know, million uh, beings. And so this song was this game, you know, but playing with sensuality and at the same time with care and putting, you know, the subject into this idea of a person that doesn't want to be anymore a person but wants to become an animal, which for a human, and this this is like the long dream of the last centuries, that humans are the last, uh, like the most upgraded uh, um, being in the world, but like upgraded, like the most uh, excellent, yeah. you know, like as if we were machines, we were the, the best, no? But these ideas are, are changing now. So it's about that, you know, someone that just wants to, like, bajarse de la humanidad, you know? All right. Which album would you like to be? Uh, animal would you like to be? Um, I don't know, like some, some animal that doesn't exist, you know? <laughs> some kind of collage. Or a <laughs> unicorn or a fiction. griffin or something like that. Yeah, okay, okay. or something Invent that has own. some superpowers, you know, like an octopus sensibility, but then the smartness of a dolphin, and then, you know, the voice of, uh, I don't know, like uh, an amazing bird. Who wow. Knows? Yeah, why not? <laughs> an octopus dolphin bird. <laughs> <laughs> Just to start, you know? Well, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much, Marie Arnal, Marcel Bages. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>